let's get into the agenda. What is going to be happening today? Um, well, first of all, we are going to be joined by our Chief Product Officer, Alex Bass. She is going to be introing Typeform for Growth. Um, and then we're going to be moving on to hear from Marin, who is our Director of Integrated Marketing, and she's going to be sharing some of the key benefits of Typeform for Growth. Um, and then she's going to hand over to Dan, who is Group Product Manager, and he's going to be running through uh, an in-depth demo for us. So we're going to be getting to see everything in action as well. And then we'll finish off with Q&A, as I said, at the end. So keep the questions flowing. Um, as I said, we are recording this, so don't worry if you have to drop out at any time. Um, and I think that that is pretty much everything. We've got loads of people coming in, so I think we can get started because we've got lots to get through. So I'm going to hand over and let's give a warm welcome to Alex Bass. Thanks, Grace. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here today. I wanted to kick things off um, by explaining what Typeform for Growth is, what we built, and why we built it. Typeform for Growth is a powerful new suite of capabilities that we've added to the Typeform platform to help marketers and go-to-market leaders just like you capture, qualify, and convert more leads to drive revenue growth. So why did we invest in optimizing customer acquisition workflows? We had two main reasons why. One, uh, it's probably not surprisingly what most of our customers have been asking us for. So with this release, we delivered many of our most requested features and resolved hundreds of feature request tickets. Our second reason was market need. Over the past few years, and many of you have experienced this, I'm sure, we've seen the go-to-market technology landscape completely explode. This visual only covers growth in the marketing technology landscape, if you can believe it. Teams are now patching together, on average, six or more tools to power their customer acquisition workflows. Simultaneously, most marketing teams are being asked to do more with less. So we thought, who better to help solve this than us here at Typeform? And that is how Typeform for Growth was born. We came up with a simple, easy to use solution that helps marketing teams do more with less fewer software tools, and less design development data and ops resources going into these workflows. Now teams can build their end-to-end -end customer acquisition workflows all from within the Typeform platform, which is very exciting. So what exactly did we build? As you saw on one of my earlier slides, we introduced over 15 new features, including new ways to engage your audience with video, enrich leads, analyze data with AI, and automate manual workflows. We also introduced three new growth pricing plans to ensure teams of all sizes can have access to sophisticated yet easy to use marketing tools. And this is just the beginning. We started by optimizing the end-to-end -end customer acquisition workflow because it's such a large growth driver for businesses. Next, we'll be working to optimize for more use cases. So please keep us in mind and please keep the feedback coming as you start to use these things and let us know what's working for you and what you need, what else we could do to help make the workflows a little bit easier. Now I'm going to pass it over to Marin to delve a little bit deeper into the new growth features and how they can benefit your business. Hey, Marin. Thanks, Alex. Hi, everybody. So while we were preparing the content for this webinar, we thought it would be great to spotlight a real world use case for you all. The marketing team here at Typeform has actually been testing out the new growth features for the past few months. So initially we planned to demo how we're using the solution ourselves and some of the benefits we've seen from it. But because we're afraid of our legal team and we don't want to violate any GDPR rules, we decided to create a fictional business that faces similar challenges that all of us have. So meet Glow & Co. This is our fictional cosmetic distribution software company. And for the rest of my presentation, I'll be presenting to you as the CMO of Glow & Co. Because when you create a fictional world, you might as well give yourself a promotion as well. So let me quickly change into my CMO outfit. One minute. There we go. Great. Welcome to Glow & Co. So we help cruelty-free, sustainable cosmetics manufacturers get their products to market faster. We've been quite successful so far growing our business in the United States, 
But to continue to hit our ambitious growth goals, we need to expand internationally and generate more leads. So to do this, we've been leveraging Typeform's new capabilities to optimize our lead gen forms and to streamline some of our customer acquisition workflows. So this is what our form looked like before. Our first project was to upgrade this main lead capture form on our website. Before, people had to fill out a long static form to learn more about the solution, like this one you see on the left. We absolutely hate filling out forms like this, and clearly so did our visitors. So we did the work to optimize it. Our data showed that many people clicked on it, but they didn't often complete the form. So we realized that we were probably asking for too much contact information. The process of filling it out is pretty boring, and it also didn't reflect our vibrant brand personality. So on the right, you can see how we transformed our lead capture form into a more interactive and engaging experience. The first big change that we made was to incorporate video into our form. We used Typeform to survey our target audience about the type of content that they like to engage with, and we found out that they prefer short, short TikTok-style video content, which I believe a lot of the world has started to prefer. So we ran an A-B test. One form had video, the other did not. And the form with video saw 10% higher completion rates. We also gave the respondents the option to respond to questions with video answers. This gave more contextual information about prospective buyers compared to our old text-based forms. And what, by collecting videos, we were pleasantly surprised with how much information that people would share with us about what they were looking for and what they needed. So by passing this information on to our sales team, it helps them craft more personalized follow-ups. And we've noticed that the sales team is spending significantly less time on discovery calls, which is better for our business. So next, we turned on automated data enrichment in our form. We all know that having too many form fields leads to lower completion rates, but as marketers, we obviously need that data to route people in the right direction and to personalize the messaging. So with auto automated data enrichment directly in Typeform's platform, now we have decided to ask for the business email address as the first question in our form. And by asking that as the first question, it unlocks the valuable firmographic, technographic, intent, demographic data from third-party sources on the back end, which frees us up from having to ask for all of that contact information. And now we can focus our form on what the information that we really need, which is how do people find out about us? What products are they most interested in? So like most marketing themes, we're being asked to do more with fewer resources. So we feel that having this comprehensive information has been really crucial to helping us figure out which marketing channels we should invest in. It's helping us prioritize which leads to focus on. And it's helping us craft different messaging for our different target audiences. It's also helping us streamline our workflows. So like many growing businesses, we struggle with manual lead management and list management processes. We've missed opportunities because we've been too slow to follow up, which is pretty frustrating for us because if we spend a lot of money on marketing and then we're too slow to follow up, that can just be a, a continuous circle that we don't wanna be in. So by aut automating our lead scoring, routing, and our follow-up communications with Typeform, we're now prioritizing and connecting with what we refer to as our hottest leads more efficiently. And then the last challenge that we are facing is was getting meaningful insights from the data we've collected. We've noticed that our other executives on the team like to see how things are performing. So being able to just share a simple report with them that's live and being updated has been really nice to get everybody involved in marketing at the company. And we've started using Typeform's Ask AI and Smart Insights features to quickly uncover details about our audience. Before we were exporting the data into Google Sheets and spending what felt like 3 million hours on pivot tables. So all of these AI analysis features have been a huge time saver for the marketing team. We're excited to see how Typeform keeps innovating with AI. And that wraps up my section. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it to Dan and he will give a demo of the new growth features. Thank you so much, Marin. So I'm Dan and I'm one of the group product managers here at Typeform, but for now, I will also be switching roles and I will play the role of marketing manager in Marin's team at Glow & Co. So 
My boss, Marin, has given me a mission, a mission to build a workflow that identifies the best leads for follow-ups and compresses the qualification journey for the hottest leads. In order to do that, I turned to Typeform's powerful set of growth features. They're super powerful individually, but plumbing them all together delivers a huge amount of value. And here's a snapshot of how we build those engaging forms that intelligently qualify our hottest leads and then seamlessly follow up with them so that we never lose a great potential customer. Let's dig into that live demo. So here we are, and I'm just gonna move the screen one second. Here we go. So here's my lead gen form for Glow & Co. Let's start by making sure that your lead capture form carries and emphasizes your brand. So we know this is super, super crucial for capturing leads. And with BrandKit, we can make sure that all of your forms are designed, are consistent, and your team is always using the right logos and image assets. And this is how this works. You can set up your brand kit for Glow & Co, and you've got all of your image assets, all of the right colors and logos right there. And next, uh, let's have a look here. What's this? So we're also asking a number of custom questions here on the same page, and we're using a new feature called multi-question pages. Um, I know that a load of you who are existing customers will absolutely love this. Um, this feature is great for capturing simple data quickly without compromising drop-offs. It's super easy to add. You simply add the multi-question page, and then you can add the blocks within that, um, and you see that uh, displays like this. But let's dial up that engagement even more. So Typeform's ethos is built on interactions being conversational. This makes for a great experience, as Marin's just talked about, but we also know that conversational forms which engage get much higher response rates. So rather than just tell us about you, we'll add a quick vid here that introduces Glow & Co and personalizes that brand. Hey there, sustainable beauty enthusiasts. Welcome to Glow & Co. We are passionate about helping cruelty-free and sustainable brands thrive by streamlining their supply chain and getting their products to market faster. To get started, we'd love to learn a bit more about you and your business in this quick survey. Thank you for being a part of the sustainable beauty movement, and we look forward to connecting with you. So when we add a video, we can either record the video directly from within TypeSpot's app, um, and we can retry if we don't quite get it right. But this time, Susie and the team has already pre-recorded that, so I could just upload it. Let's move on. We've engaged our customer now with this lead, with this simple uh, uh, initial lead capture. And so here we're going to use the email question block. It's one little block, but it's pulling a wild amount of data through. So we're going to first make sure that data enrichment is turned on. And with this, Typeform is going to use third-party data sources to pull together public information about that email address. So let's have a look at what that could look like. And I'll just publish first quickly. So if we see already, we've got a test response here from myself. Um, and you can see that we've got things here that have been enriched already. So we've got things like company content and country. We've got an enriched company description list. We've got the company employee count, employee range, what the company is doing, the company name, company revenue. So we've got a huge amount of information that's coming through that we can consider as free information when we're building a lead capture form because we're not asking the respondent to fill in all of this data. It's coming in through enrichment. Let's also head into form settings. And in form settings, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna turn on recapture protection. This means that any suspicious looking or reported emails will be flagged and those respondents when they're trying to fill out that form will be met with a challenge in order to proceed. And you're used to seeing those capture challenges all over the, the internet. And at this point we've captured um, some really valuable data, including all of that enriched data. So let's put a partial submit point here. And that means that if leads drop off later in the form, we can still follow up on them. 
So let's navigate to the next question. We've got this question in the form which helps to hook the reason why leads are here. For us, it's super practical because it lets us follow up with a purpose on those leads. But it's sometimes tricky to work out what sort of options we could have for a, a, a question like this. I've started with one of our main value props, which is to improve supply chain efficiency. And let's see what Typeforms AI suggests could be other options. implementing effective marketing strategies, enhancing brand visibility, and managing inventory. These look great. At this point, we're also gonna make sure that the form is hooked up to our CRM, HubSpot. You can notice the HubSpot icon up here, which means that we're already connected. This means that you'll notice that on each question, we can map directly to HubSpot to make sure that that data flows into HubSpot in the correct way. But there's more. Say we want to add a new question about geographic shipping, but we know that there's already a field with options for that in our HubSpot setup. Let's do that with create with HubSpot. So by choosing the region ship to down here, it's going to create a new question using the options that are already in our HubSpot setup. And Typeform's AI is also going to suggest what that question should be based on the context of the form and also the question and the mappings. It's going to map the options to make sure that HubSpot options straight away are mapped. Um, and looking great, you can, you can see that it's easier as ever to make sure that your forms work with HubSpot out of the box. In each of the questions, you'll see this little config button and clicking that config button here will make sure that you can see that they're mapped. But also what it's gonna do is we can map all of those enriched data into our HubSpot as well. So that enriched data flows straight, straight through into HubSpot. So we're now going to try and score and qualify the leads so we can focus on only the most valuable leads. This question tries to understand the potential customer's scale. So we know that under 100 orders per, per month is a bit small for us, um, but we know that we do really well with mid-sized distributors. So let's use this form scoring capability and logic to do exactly that. We'll navigate to the last question we're getting qualification information from, which is this one, and we're going to add scoring logic to that. So we have the scoring logic through branching, segmentation, and calculations. And let's navigate down to that question. How many orders do you dispatch each month? So here that we can see that we're going to give a bigger score um, to the orders that are dispatching at mid mid-size. We're going to give a much smaller score to those smaller order, uh, order numbers. And we're going to give a medium range score to those ones that ship um, an awful lot um, of orders. What we're then gonna do is we're gonna also score based on some of that enriched data that we have. So again, any enriched data is a total plus. It means that we're collecting what is essentially free to the user experience, but helps us prioritize the very best leads that we can go after. So if the enriched company has an employee count of greater than 10, let's add another five to that score. If they're greater than 30, however, let's add 10 to that score. If the enriched company is based in North America, we'll add 10. And at this point, we're then gonna work out how to segment. So what we're gonna do um, is some, add some segments so that we can use those scores later on in our logic. So if the score is greater than 20, then we're gonna assign that lead to the high quality lead segment. If the score is lower than five, we'll say that they're low quality. And if they're between five and 20, we'll say they're medium quality. What we're now going to do, which is super valuable, is do some cool inform qualification to really handhold for the very best leads we have. Medium and high quality leads, as you can see here, are going to be routed to a VIP video question, whereas lower quality leads are going to go to a link which engages them with more content and thanks them for their time. And again, here's a different way of seeing that. At this point, once we've collected that qualification information, 
those medium and high quality leads are going to our VIP video question, whereas the lower quality leads are being thanked for their time so that we don't waste a huge amount of time on them in the form. So this is where those priority leads will end up. And here we don't just have an engaging video question, but we've got the opportunity for leads to reply with their own video. Let's take a look. I'm Dan. I work in the sales team here at Glow & Co. It seems as a really great fit based on some of your answers, and we're confident we can add value. I'd love to schedule a time to talk to you as soon as possible. Could you introduce yourself and what you're looking for? Feel free to talk through the challenges you're trying to solve, or even walking through how you manage distribution at the moment with a screen share. Really looking forward to speaking. I don't quite know who I am now. I'm Dan, I'm a Typeform product manager. I'm also working as a marketing manager in Glow & Co. And now apparently I work in sales. Um, I've worn many hats. Um, but again, what we've got here is not just engaging video question, which captures those leads and personalizes the follow-up already, um, but it gives the opportunity for respondents to respond with their own video. Um, so this is absolutely awesome for use cases like consultation or coaching right through to things like software demos. And it means that when you reach out to the customer, you've already built that first connection. And for those priority leads, we're also going to capture that engagement and book a follow-up call right away with Calendly. We don't need them to add their name or, name or email. That's already captured and filtered through. Typeform's making it super easy for us here. And this is where the magic really is. By this point, we've engaged the lead in a three-minute form. It's collected a ton of information to qualify them, as well as a ton of enriched information. Um, and whereas normally that data then heads off to your CRM and a salesperson might pick it up days later with an email to book them in for a call, we've done it right here. And so we've compressed that journey from what might be weeks or days down to minutes. Let's also make sure that we don't waste the lead. And let's set up follow-ups. So you set up follow-ups by going in here and clicking on follow-ups. And here we'll set up a follow-up that has a trigger based on those segments. So when a segment is high quality or the segment is medium quality, then send a Slack. And in that Slack, that Slack will go to the Gloco sales demo channel and it'll tell them all the valuable information that they need to follow up, the name, the company, the email, It'll show them the time for the product demo from Calendly, and it can also show them any of that enriched information if that's valuable as well, and super helpful, the score in the segment. This means that if we haven't had a call booked by someone who's a super a high priority segment, and we can see that their score is really high, with that, we're gonna be like, okay, cool, we need to follow up on them straight away. And we also have the power to understand that data even easier with things like AI insights. So if we jump over to a similar form, which has already got a load of responses, we can see how you can use something like Ask AI and the question to see it produce a visualization for us by plotting two different question responses against each other. So here I asked AI to group the number of leads I have in Europe by product type. And what it did is it ran through the different leads across Europe. It looked at their question that they had, which is which region are they present in? It looked at a different question, which is to say what product types they offer. And it did a cross tab on that to make sure that you can see the information that you really need. This is then obviously super if you need to capture that in a quick report and send it on to people that work with you. So let me jump back. Oh, one second, sorry. I've got to sort my windows out again. Otherwise I can't see anything. So hopefully now you're all equipped to hit that goal that Marin set me as well. The goal was a workflow that identifies the best leads for follow-up and compresses the qualification journey for hot leads. And to recap, Typeform for Growth lets you build workflows with engaging forms that intelligently qualify the very best leads for seamless follow-up so you never lose a great potential customer. And we've achieved that with tools like BrandKit, video questions and answers, partial responses, spam prevention with capture, inform enrichment, inform scoring and lead segmentation, follow-ups, our seamless HubSpot integration, and AI-powered insights. The incredible community team will point you to the detailed help center content for all of these awesome features in the follow-up comes from the webinar, 
But hopefully what we can see here is that the sum is worth, or the, the whole is worth far greater than the sum of its parts. These individual features like enrichment or video crash questions, spam prevention are super valuable, but it's when you plumb them all together that you create a superstar workflow that can really help grow the business. So that's Typeform for growth. We can't wait to see what you're all going to do with it and excited to see it help drive your own business growth. But rest assured, we're not stopping just there. Here's a quick peek at our roadmap showing what's coming. So we're also gonna help you further streamline your marketing workflows with deeper integrations for both B2B and B2C marketers, new follow-up triggers to power personalized follow-ups, and more lead activity data with more enrichment offerings. We'll also unlock deeper insights for your audience data by giving you an AI question block, which intelligently and dynamically gets the right insight from your leads, giving you a respondent view of your data so you can see how one lead interacts with different forms as they progress through your workflows, and even more powerful AI data analysis. And finally, we know that data is nothing unless it's captured and reliable. So you'll see duplicate entry prevention to make sure respondents are unique, partial responses being enhanced to be able to capture all responses, and invisible recapture so we can get rid of spam without any friction whatsoever. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you today. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about all the new capabilities in type form as much as me and the team have loved building them. And with that, I'm gonna say thank you very much and pass back over to the wonderful Grace. Thanks, Dan. I think you deserve a lie down after being product manager, sales manager, and marketing manager. <laughs> it's a busy time. I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> right. Um, hopefully, uh, that's been a lot of food for thought for everybody watching. Um, and we're excited to uh, hear what you think of all the features. Um, I'm going to launch a quick poll. Hopefully, this works. Let us know uh, if you can see the poll, first of all, and uh, if you have a, a favourite feature so far, uh, what are you most excited about? Um, and then we're going to dive into some questions. I know there's already been a load that have been coming through and Alex and Liz have been uh, painstakingly answering them all. They're super fast. But if you've got more questions, please do, please do drop them in the Q&A section um, and then we can answer them live. Um, someone says that they like them all. That's that's good news. Um, I'm going to give you two more seconds to share your thoughts in the poll, and then let's have a look at what's what's top of the the list for everybody. Right, let's go. Let's click on end. Okay, sharing results. So it looks like the video forms are definitely out in the lead there, but it's pretty good going in terms of all of the different features. So. This is good news. We have some people asking about uh, the recording um, and the presentation and everything. We will, we are recording this. We will be sharing everything with you tomorrow. Um, so you can um, catch up on this. I know uh, there was a lot to take in in one session. So you'll be able to watch this back anytime. Um, and there'll also be the slide deck and all the resources as well that Dan talked about. We're gonna share it in the Typeform community too. Um, so let's jump in and have a look. Um, there's, there's like nothing in the Q and A now. Does anyone have any questions that they would like, uh, Dan, Alex and Marin to ask? Um, I know that we've had some good ones come in already. Um, a lot of people asking about HubSpot and the different, uh, features that we have shared any more questions that want to come through? We've got a lot of people saying thank you in the chat, which is good. Hopefully this has been a really helpful session. Ah, okay, one question here. Do you have a solution to record an audio answer? That's a good one. Is that coming? Alex, do you want to take that? Yes, absolutely. So um, the type form strategy is to really exp expand into as many different formats of collecting information and engaging with um, respondents as possible. So voice is absolutely going to be um, on our roadmap. Awesome. That's good news. And um, some Sophie's asking, what CRM integrations do we have? Does anybody want to list a few of the top ones? We definitely have HubSpot. We have an integration with Clavio. 
um, as well as one with Active Campaign. And Zapier is another tool that people use to make sure that the data can be mapped to the CRMs that they're leveraging. Um, but I just wanted to share with this group as well that Create within the context of HubSpot experience is one that we are looking uh, to see how it performs. And then we will absolutely be expanding that to the CRMs that are the most interesting and used by our customer base. And so you can see additional CRMs um, in the future roadmap following that pattern of experience within the product. Yeah, I've seen coming up in the chat there about Salesforce. And yes, we do have a Salesforce integration. Again, as, as Alex just said, it's not quite as ingrained in the product as the HubSpot integration, but we'll be working on that if there's, a, if there's enough customer demand for that. We've got a few follow-up questions about the audio answer, which maybe maybe we can't answer yet, but maybe we can allude to some stuff. Um, will the audio answer be auto integrated to the sheets or will it be saved as a voice recording? I'm guessing will there be a transcript, right, for the audio answer? Yes, for video and for audio, our pattern that we've surfaced um, as a theme that comes out through customer interviews is that not only do they want to hear or see the actual clip that was recorded, on individual basis, but they also want to be able to transcribe that into text and be able to analyze it at scale. Uh, and so we are, those will be the two experiences that we will be prioritizing is you will both be able to hear the actual things that customers are saying to you through the form. You will also have that transcribed uh, and then be able to apply AI analysis to the data that's collected through there. Awesome. And we have a couple more. I think Alex is going to go through an answer. There's some questions about various different integrations that we have. And I think Alex is very kindly going through and answering those too. Um, we've got some feedback. HubSpot integration looked amazing. Um, are we, do we have plans to do something similar with Salesforce? We do. Um, we absolutely have plans to do something similar with Salesforce. Um, that's, that's kind of the next one on the docket for us to hack as well. Um, another one, uh, maybe for you, Alex, um, can you also force people to submit a video instead of giving them the choice between video and text? Um, good question. Dan, do you have an update on this one? I know that at the moment, um, we give people video and text as an option. So you can't force a video. Um, you could probably be more forceful in your request for that video to try and get that. The reason we have this is because we ultimately want the insight and we know that there are some barriers to respondents submitting video. Um, we're going to be working on those barriers and that's the right way to solve this problem. So how do we make it super easy for people who are responding to a video question with a video feel confident and comfortable when they're giving that video reply? Um, so we'll do that. And then if we, if we can totally win that and know that we're always going to get those video responses, then we can start to force them. Brilliant. Um, do we have an integration with Google Sheets? We do. It's one of our most popular integrations, actually. Brilliant. That was a nice, easy one. And um, we oh, there's a question about uh, the new partial submit points and whether there will be in the future the option to plug in more than one at a time. That's yes, not... so um, we leverage the partial submit point first to align with the customer acquisition workflow, knowing that for those people that are doing customer acquisition, once you get the email address, it allows for things like enrichment and follow up a little bit more easily uh, than if somebody abandons before they provide you with that information or somebody doesn't complete the form all the way to its end and then you miss out on whatever they did complete throughout the process. And so that was priority number one. Uh, priority number two, the evolution of the partial responses strategy is that it will um, basically collect any information that somebody provides to you through the form without you needing to add that partial submit point. Um, so that is what we're working towards. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Um, Mariana's asking, can customers sign terms and conditions? 
We do not currently have a signature block. That's also one that we're considering or in the discovery process for that. There's a lot of uh, legal hurdles to cross when you're trying to make uh, things legally binding. Um, and so we will keep this group updated as we continue to go through the discovery process and, and evolve our roadmap over time. Brilliant. And, and on that, just I know a few people are asking about this as we go along. We are recording this, so um, we'll be sharing the recording tomorrow. And uh, if you join the Typeform community, um, you'll find a post there that has the recording plus the slide deck, plus all the resources we've talked about. And you can also uh, leave any extra feedback or ask any follow up questions there as well. Um, oh, there's quite a few to to get through we'll keep going for a little bit longer um so is there an integration with stripe yes we currently do have um a payment integration with stripe so you can set a payment uh, block in your form um but it doesn't deliver information back into typeform from stripe it just delivers the payment uh, through Stripe, and you have to bring your own Stripe account for that. Cool, and we can link out to Stripe. Uh, we have a Help Center article for that, so we can link out to that uh, in the community post tomorrow. Uh, so make sure everyone goes and joins the community. Shameless community plug there from me. Um, uh, someone's asking, is it possible to trigger a form at a random interval based on a user's activity within a page? Uh, yes, it would be. Um, you're going to have to do some uh, some work in order to get this uh, to trigger, but you can basically embed the form in the page, and then you would just have to write some JavaScript. What I would suggest here um, is to post on the community. We have some of our engineers that work in the team that manages embeds who are super active here, and they could help walk you through this. So that would be my my tip there. But you could do it. It's not a um, it's not a normal route that we have, but you could definitely do it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Uh, let's have a look here. We have a lot of people in the chat very excited about video and audio, which is awesome to hear. Um, and there's a few more integration questions. We answered the Stripe one, so we can get rid of that. Um, Oh, and Alex is also answering for me, which is great. Uh, is it possible to get answered questions through interface or API connections before the whole form has been submitted? Yeah, so I can answer this. So with the partial submit point that you saw me add in the form, what that partial submit point does is it will both deliver the response into the results section before the full form has been submitted but it'll also fire that response through the API so that if you have hooked up um, something uses, using Typeform's responses API, um, you will see that partial. What will then happen is if that person then goes on to submit the full response, you'll see that partial response turn into a full response. Brilliant. Thank you, Dan. Um, We've got loads of questions coming in about various different integrations. As Dan said, I think heading over to the Typeform community um, and asking your questions there is a great idea. We've got loads of information already there, um, and but you can, of course, ask questions. And there's lots of Typeform experts in there that can help with all of this stuff. Uh, if Does anyone else have any more questions about uh, Typeform for growth and any of the features that you have seen today? Please drop them in the chat. Um, we would love to hear your feedback. And on that note, I'm going to uh, skip over. We're sharing the community link in the chat at the moment if no one has seen the Typeform community before. Definitely recommend you joining it um, because there's, as I said, there's loads of great resources over there and the recording will be there tomorrow too. And we have this lovely little QR code for you to scan um, so you can join there too. So as I said, we have been recording this and we are going to share the recording tomorrow via email and in the Typeform community. And if there's any questions that we didn't get to today, we will definitely follow up with those in the community. Um, let's have a quick look. Um, there's one more question about partial submit. If Dan yeah, I, can, 
Grace, I think I can answer both of those questions. So Cyril has uh, asked a question about video recorder. Just want to clarify there that um, there is a video recorder for both setting up video questions when you're building a form and also for the participant when they're answering a form. So if you're in the form, you don't have to use some other tool to record a video and then upload it through Typeform. Um, you can record it directly through Typeform and you'll see a super nice interface where um, where it pops up. Um, so that should answer your question there, Cyril. Uh, Natalia Abaran, partial submits and Salesforce integrations. At the moment, that's on the roadmap, so that should be coming pretty soon. Um, at the moment, Salesforce will just get the full um, the full submit, um, but a, a partial submit going through to Salesforce will be on the on the cards. And partial submits already work with HubSpot. Awesome. And then there's one more question: If we add points to previous surveys, will the points be added retroactively? This is a great question, um, and we were having a conversation about this last week. So. Um, by points, I assume you're meaning that if you want to score results and score leads, um, at the moment, they won't be added retroactively, um, but it is something that we are considering quite a lot. So if we see that a lot of people start to use scoring in forms, then we'll work out how you can retroactively apply scoring and segmentation through the results section. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think we're probably going to wrap it up here, um, but uh, it, as I said, if you do have more questions, please feel free to drop them over in the Typeform community. Um, after this, we're going to be waiting for Zoom to gift us the recording, and then we are going to send it out to you via email tomorrow. And as I said, it'll be in the community along with all of the resources that we've talked about today. Um, we want to know what you think, uh, what you thought of this session after you uh, leave the Zoom webinar. It's going to ask you if you want to fill out a survey. I would love it if you did. While it's fresh in your mind, please let us know what you think um, of the new solution. What did you think of this session? Was it helpful for you? And spoiler, there is uh, a video um, question in there as well. So you get to see that in action and have a go playing around with it too. Um, so that's it for now. Um, hopefully this was really useful for everyone. Thank you so much to Dan, Marin and Alex for joining us today. And thank you for everyone that's watching and stayed to the bitter end as well. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Um, let, yeah, let us know if you'd like us to host more of these. We would, uh, we really are looking forward to hearing your feedback. Um, but that's it for now. Thank you so much to everybody and we'll see you again very soon.